I think this is all right. So, um, hi everyone, I'm AG, I'm a DJ, I do other stuff, but yeah, this is P Money, and we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna focus on him, and we're gonna be talking about DIY, uh, doing things yourself. I know a lot of you are probably artists, or like producers, or just creatives in general, and yeah, I understand that like, sometimes when we look at the industry, everything's a machine, because the industry is a machine, but, um, Sometimes it's hard to separate that and figure out how to do things yourself. So that is what we're going to talk about. So yeah, hi. Hi. Do you want to give give a little bit of background about who you are? Um, for those that don't know, I'm a Grand MC from South East London called P Money. Boop, yeah, boop, boop. I'll take the South no, London. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I've been doing music for about I don't know, man. Maybe I feel like 16 years now. 16 years writing, recording. Some parts felt like the same thing every year, but it's just like different journey every year. It's like a reset button. But I yeah. say that all the time. I yeah, say it's like I, a reset, isn't it? When people ask like, how long have you known people? Like, I couldn't even tell you how many years I've known you because I yeah. feel like every year is the same thing. We do yeah, the yeah. same things. You just get to a different level. Yeah. So yeah, that, that is a big part about doing it yourself, like perseverance and like... 100% continuing to do the same thing over and over again because you know that at least one time of you doing this thing you're going to get a result yeah so that's a bit long but um how did you how did you start off in your music career um before it was actually a career like obviously I was in school writing lyrics it was weird I never told no one like little D's my like my closest friend best friend we were in school and for the first couple of years of school, I didn't tell him I could MC. I used to just listen to him and my other friends MC. It weren't until someone someone was clashing in the playground. Someone was trying to clash Little D and my other friend Kenzie, and I stepped in like, are you nuts? You know what I mean? I started busting my lyrics, and everyone went mad like, oh, my days, you never told me. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't, really, I didn't really care. I didn't care until that moment, until I felt someone was using their lyrics against my friend. I didn't care. Do you know what I mean? That's why, I, f I don't know, I guess that might be why I liked Graham so much. Mm -hmm. It just gave me a feeling, get involved. And um, from there, you know, the typical school assemblies and going to all the youth clubs. Back then, there was tons of youth clubs, different areas. We used to go to every area. And that's how we became known in our area. Like, before, there was no internet. We didn't have internet these days. Do you know what I mean? Man was sitting on a bus. Don't move your phone. Infrared, send me that tune. Do you know what I mean? It was... <laughs> It was them days, right? you're moving, you're restarting and all that. It was, honestly, it was them days on the back of the bus and that, like, bus goes over a hump, ah, you gotta restart, it's long. Like, those are the days, like, that, we literally, DIY from the get-go, we was just going everywhere we could, and then um, even Little D, the rest of the people in my crew, they actually went to a youth club in East London and met people like Discarda, Trim, do you know what I mean? That's how we started linking up with the other MCs from out the area. I didn't know there was outside of London. I didn't know Birmingham. I didn't know Manchester. We just knew our area, South East London. But doing music, we started just linking up with other people. Do you know what I mean? MSN, I'm just getting a random ad. Yo, you're hard. Yeah, yo, who, who are you, bro? Like, <laughs> oh, I'm so-and-so. I'm from here. Birmingham. Where's Birmingham? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they weren't Google Maps. At Birmingham, someplace. <laughs> hey, shout right. out Birmingham. <laughs> I know there's like, going to be one person like, <laughs> yeah, like, no, but, like what do you yeah, mean? Yeah, I was like, raw, like, okay, cool, safe, do you know what I mean? And then, like, through, from there, I just started sending music over MSN, sending music to people, just random, anyone who added me, I didn't know who they were, boy, girl, whatever, just sending music. And then um, from there, um, yeah, it just started growing. It just started growing. But that's how I started, literally, in school, just in the playgrounds, man. Okay, so if we want to have like a more in-depth, uh, you know, insight into your career, we can like search your interviews and stuff like that. But I'm going to start talking about when you first started feeling that this was a job, when you started, like when it goes from hobby to actually being, yeah. this is my main, <laughs> not, even, not even when it's a side job, when it's like your main job, like yeah. how did your attitude to, to music in general change then? That was when um, I dropped out of college. Like, in school, when I, I don't know about now, but when I was in school, they, didn't, they don't teach you you can MC. They don't teach you you can be a producer. They don't teach you any of that and say you can make a living. Do you know what I mean? Mm. It was, here's some drums. 
play in it. Like yeah. that was it. You just learned how to play the drums, but that was it. That was the end. There wasn't. Now you're a drummer. You can go and do this. So when I was in um, school, we was leaving school, and it was like, what you wouldn't do in college. I was at media. I just picked media. There wasn't. I wanted to do music, but there was I did nothing. Media. Yeah. For me, I, I wanted to learn the video side of it. Mm. Like most of my videos, if anyone seems, most of them I actually direct myself. So that's why I picked media. I wanted to learn like the video side of it. But then even that, I was like, this ain't me, man. Like, I want to do music. Tired of people coming up to me, yo, you're hard. And I'm like, all right, cool. Is that the, that's the end. That's it. Someone tells you you're hard, but you're just going to go college <laughs> and learn to use a camera. It's like, that's yeah. not me. Do you know what I mean? So I, I just literally dropped out of college, stopped going. And it was the old story that everyone says, yo. Mum's like, job fam. I'm like, nah, my mixtape, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> I swear to you, I swear to you to this day, one day, yeah, my mum will do an interview or something. I had this conversation with her in the kitchen. My mixtape's gonna be hard, mum. I was recording a mixtape called Coins to Notes. I was like, trust me, this is, this is gonna be the thing. Like, I'm gonna do this, I'm doing this properly. Do you know what I mean? She weren't hearing it, she weren't caring, but she backed me. She didn't force me, push me to go and get a job in Sainsbury's. I was like, nah, I'm not interested in stacking shelves. Like, no offense, I just don't want to do that. Like, I know I'm not going to put my all into it. I'm going to be unhappy. That's not me, do you know mm. what I mean? Some people, that's them. I just one of those people. I struggle with, like, authority. You know, someone, go and do that. No, yeah. that's just me. Why? But, yeah, why? Do you know, that's the person I was. You do it. Like, so for me, I was just like, I want to do music. And um, yeah, I, re I recorded my first mixtape, and I, that's the first time I started like turning it into a hustle, selling a CD for a pound. Me, and my friends. You're selling it yourself. Yeah, selling it ourselves. Rolling okay, People's Day again. in Catford, uh, South East London. There's like a, an event that happens every year in summer called People's Day, and we always used to go as as youths from the ends. We always used to go. It's it's like a mini festival for South East London. Anyone in Catford, Lewisham, used to be there. Hundreds of kids, and we all knew each other. So I used to run around selling my mixtape to my friends and then they're sending it to adults. My friends are selling my CD to other people. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then it was a matter of weeks before people started coming back. Like, oh, I love this tune. and I love that tune. I made a tune where I bigged up all my friends. Like all my friends, little road names. I had it in one song called My Soldiers. And it was like, everyone was showing it to their friends. You know what I mean? So that's when I started getting recognized by people's mums and stuff like that. And it started taking off from there. And then, <laughs> do you know what I mean? When I, when, you know when you put all your pounds in the, in the jar and I was like, right, man's got peas. Like, this is, <laughs> yeah. From there, I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? And I just started trying to learn and find ways to, you know, take it to the next level, whether it was linking up with other artists or, do you know what I mean? Just, yeah, grafting. Okay, cool. So a big part of DIY is investing into yourself. 100%. When did you get to the point where you was making all these peas, like the the coins were stacked? When did it get to a point where you thought, I'm not gonna take this money and go buy crepes. I'm gonna take this money and go buy something that's yeah. gonna further my career. Um, That weren't until, you know, back in the day, man had dial up. Your, your mum goes on the phone, the internet, it, yeah. it cuts out. You can't, uh, AOL. Do you know Ooh. what I mean? Man needed, I needed that Sky internet that, do you know what I mean? I started paying things for myself. I need this. Mum, this is yeah. mine, bruv. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm paying the bill. You I, feel I wanna, like a G though when yeah, you do yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When like, you start oh doing things gosh. yourself and paying bills and stuff like that, do you know what I mean? But I, I learned a lesson early. When I done my first mixtape, I started picking up heat and I wanted to do a second one. And um, people approached me. Um, from the ends, like an like older lot, and it was like, we can help you release a mixtape, do you know what I mean? We can help you, we can get you money in advance, you know what I mean? We can get you free grand. I was like, free grand? Ah, whatever, do you know <laughs> what I mean? But then, um, literally, you recorded the mixtape, they gave me free studio time, whatever, recorded the mixtape, and I'll never forget, I went down to, um, what was the record shop, man? I think it was called Uptown in West End. It was a record yeah. shop called Uptown, and DJ Cameo was working there, and I remember going there, massive box of CDs, handing over the CDs and I just got three grand cash and I was like, what? Like, <laughs> I can make this money now. I've got that doesn't beef. happen nowadays. Yeah, now it's so different. It's a lot, it's, 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 yeah, it's a lot different. But I, from there I was like, raw, like, okay, cool, peas. But then I didn't learn what was going on. I didn't know, I, I didn't press it up myself. I don't mm -hmm. know where they got it pressed up. I just remember I went and got the artwork done, gave them the CD, gave them the artwork. They went and got it pressed up. Here's a bunch of CDs. Here's some for yourself to give to your friends. The rest we give to this guy, he sells. For all I know, they gave me three grand, but they could have made 20. Yeah. To this day, I don't know. But I was young, so 
then I started learning that, like, hang on, I'm doing these mixtapes and getting this P, but how much you making? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And I weren't getting the answers I wanted. So that's when I said, you know what? I need to learn for myself. And that's, a, that's one thing I always teach people whenever they're doing music. I always say, don't get someone to show you how to do something. Like, make them show you by you doing it. Like, don't let someone like, oh, do it for me. Never do that. Because yeah. you see, if God forbid something happens to that person or they stop talking to you, you still don't know how to do it. And that's the situation I was in. That was the first lesson where I learned, you know what? I need to learn how to actually release a CD myself. So then that's when I started turning it into a business. I, I started looking it up. I found a site called um, TuneCore, signed up. It was like an American site. You get paid in dollars. And um, you literally upload your music, and then it, it puts it onto, like, you pick the date, pick the release date, upload your artwork, and then it puts it onto iTunes. And Spotify went around at these times. It was a few other ones, and it puts it all on there. And then that's when I had um, Blacks and P CD. Me and Blacks had a, a joint CD. And that was the first, like, proper independent release no one helped me it was all me do you know what i mean and okay, we cool. we just we made money and me and my friend made legal money from just doing it ourselves that way okay cool so now things have changed and like the like selling music the way to sell music and the way to get money back in music has really drastically changed especially in like the past three years mm. like you know there's no there's not that much emphasis on like physical copies, like it's all streaming now. So there's all like, there's all sites that do a lot of this for you. And yeah. there's like things that take away a lot of the middleman and you don't really know what's happening. You just mm. see the outcome. Yeah. How do you still like, how do you still like have that DIY attitude and like inform yourself when you can't get the information that easily? Um, things like today, man seminars and stuff like that I've, I've attended a lot of things where like i found out the other day spotify do something similar to like what we're doing right now do you know what i mean i'm planning to find out when the next one is to go but researching online literally email everyone everyone at all these sites all these sites that I use email find email addresses and email do you know what i mean but it's hard you never like this industry i don't know why but information costs money it's no one wants to just give you information i don't know why it's i don't true. know if they feel like you know you're gonna come clean up and just leave them dry it's like people don't understand that everyone can make a living off music it, it, i don't know why it, the moment you start popping that's when everyone wants to give you everything free like yeah. we we hustle hard to buy the clothes we wear i make one banger here you go here's everything you bought for free i'm like you could <laughs> Because I just, I got this. <laughs> I bought this last week, do you know what I mean? But I don't know, it's just how the game is. There's no real, there's no real blueprint. There isn't, I'll be honest. Like, not for me, not that I've found. I've just found what I do and DIY, just do it yourself, learn as much as you can. And if it isn't broken, just, you know, no need to fix it. You can always try. Don't be afraid to try other stuff. Like me, when I was on... um Facebook, back back when it was just Facebook, everyone was on Facebook, had a mad fan page, it was popping, everyone was on Twitter, and I was just like, dead, don't know what that is, I'm not going yeah. on that, do you know what I mean? I just, yeah, but everyone's like, no, you need to go on there. All right, cool, like, my PR at the time made me a Twitter, and just made it, just left it there. Then it was like 50,000 people following it, I was just like, 50,000 you're following something, <laughs> I'm not even on there, I'm not tweeting it, like, do you know what I mean? But it just showed, like, times had changed, you have to move with the times, it's like, Pressing up the CDs. I used to be on that. Press up your CD. You might not sell none now. You know what I mean? It's a streaming thing. I used to be against the streaming thing. I heard about Spotify and these things years ago. Stream? What's that? Nah, man. I don't know about that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's going to be the big thing. It's going to pay. All right, whatever, bro. Like, I never used to believe in it. Now, I'm constantly telling people streaming is like the new free download. Like, you pay your, your subscription whether it's, I don't know, 9 99 a month, and you've got access to every kind of music you can have access to. If it's released and it's on Spotify, you can listen to anything, do you know what I mean, for 9 99 Where me, as an artist, if I was going to give something out for free, I'd, I'd say now just put it on Spotify, put it on everything, do you know what I mean? Everywhere is now starting to pay and stuff like that. All these, all these websites, all these... I think SoundCloud even started to try and pay artists, but they just, I don't know... I don't think they got as big as the other streaming yeah. platforms. They jumped on a bit late. But there's there's so much things you can do now. Everyone can make a living off music now. It's just you have to do it. You have to learn. 
I'm still learning. Everybody goes on like, yo, you're, you know, you're so sick, you do all these things. I'm like, yeah, I just learn and I'm just, I'm like you, bro. I'm just maybe more known, I might be doing it. Some people look at people like, some people look at me like, oh, you're that guy. And I'm like, yeah, but do you know how long I've been doing this for? Mm. You can't just jump on a tune tomorrow and be think you're going to get 100,000 followers tomorrow. You're going to get a million views tomorrow and a million streams tomorrow. It rarely happens. It can, <coughs> but it rarely happens. Do you know what I mean? It's true. But yeah, you just got to try and learn, man. It's hard. There's no real, there's no place to just go and get information. You just got to get on your email, get on your job, man. Don't be afraid to question nothing and no one. Okay, so I'm going to scale back a bit. I remember you mentioned your PR. Yeah. An important part of DIY and doing it yourself is realising when it's okay to work with other people. Yeah. How do you, how do you like differentiate like where something is an opportunity for you to work with someone and when something may not benefit you? How do you like... You kind of know... Just by talking to people, it's the same PRs, managers, whatever, when you talk to someone. And the first question is, what, what can you offer me? You're the artist, understand that, you're the artist, yeah? People need you, whether it's a DJ, whether it's a producer, whatever, someone needs you and they wanna work with you. Okay, cool, what can you do? And you just listen, listen to what they can do. If, not, if they're saying stuff you can do already, there's no need, is there? There's no, you're not gaining anything, do you know what I mean? But if they start saying certain things like, you know, I can get you placed in this magazine that has this reach, or I can get you your video released on Fader that has this reach and this, and you start, they start saying things to you, you know you can't get. You start saying, okay, cool, this is something I want, Let me, let's work, do you know what I mean? And it, like, the industry is cold though. Some people are sharks, they're your friend today, your enemy tomorrow. It is very hard to work out. <laughs> Look, a couple of people. Everyone was mm, like, mm, 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 mm. yeah. It's it's hard. It's definitely hard to work out who's genuine. Like you, you feel like you want to be friends with someone. Do you know what I mean? You do business, and then they just snake you, and then they just say, "Oh, it's just business." Do you know what I mean? It yeah. is, it's it's hard. It is cutthroat, but the opportunity will always present itself. It, you will just hear something you're not doing. Do you know what I mean? Whether you're at a seminar like this or you overhear a conversation and you think, right, I, I should do that, I should try that. Just try things, do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, man, it's, 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 a, it's a tough one. It's, it's a tough one knowing who's who in this thing. I'm still learning today, yeah. do you know what I mean? But yeah, with PR companies, man, just literally ask them, you know, Here, here's, my, here's my product, here's my project. What can you do with this? Do you know what I mean? And make them even make them sign an agreement if they say i can get you a million views put that in <laughs> writing you know what i mean put that in writing because you said you can do that if they can't do that you got to start questioning that yo you said you could give me a million views you haven't like what else can you what can you do for me since you didn't deliver do you know what i mean yeah. so but yeah it's, it's, it is hard not, not it ain't gonna work all the time man a lot of people base their own careers on other people's no one's the same yeah that's true Another thing, like you do your own videos, you have your own radio show, you have your own label, you do your own night, when's the next one? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you do all of this yourself, yeah? Like another thing that's hard with DIY is sometimes when it's only you, how do you push yourself? How do you like check yourself when you're being lazy? How do you like check when you're not reaching where you want to be? Like how do you? Um. I don't know, everyone's different, everyone has different goals, but you kind of like, like I said, every year for me is a restart. If you, I don't know, if you do, if you, you released a tune last year and it got a certain amount of hits, whatever, automatically you, you want, you, you should be looking for bigger and more, do you know what I mean? Some people are content, you know, they do one thing and they're just like, ah, oh, yeah, cool, that's me. Nothing wrong with that. But for me, I just look at what I did last year and I say, I don't want to do that, I want to do this now something completely different that's more of a challenge. Like recently I started doing like drum and bass shows, like literally not writing drum and bass bars, just doing grime, but on a drum and bass tempo and trying to impress their crowd. And when they say, yo, you're hard, I say, yeah, I'm a grime MC. That's why I sound like this and you like this. Let's see if you like grime. And a lot of them will say, oh, you know, they start listening to grime. Okay, I like this, I like this MC as well. It's the same with dubstep. When I was doing dubstep, at first they didn't want no MC. What? No, man, <laughs> turn off that mic that I don't want to hear him. Who's that? Do you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. then when I started doing it, they started liking it and it kind of merged Graham and Dubstep a bit because they started noticing, okay, these MCs got something. They work well on this side branching out. Start, things started coming together. But yeah, man, it's, 
it's just hard for me to explain because it's we want the tips you want yeah because I, I i procrastinate all the time like yeah. there's times where i know like sometimes things do get on top when you're doing everything by yourself you're just like oh my gosh can i get a break so uh, yeah you kind of <laughs> yeah you have to just honestly set your goals bro whether you i always try to say to people don't watch other artists because mm-hmm. you don't know what's going on behind closed doors you don't know if someone else is pulling the strings you don't know if that they got a billionaire behind them mm. you don't know a lot of artists are coming out screaming independence when they ain't they're signed secretly or mm. distributor or there's something there's always a team even me i do a lot of things myself but there's a lot of people who i do you know ask things that yo i ask a pr like i ask i say and anderson yo you got that artist that thing there, how did you get that? Like I learned, when I release my music, I release it through Ditto, which is like a distribution company. I learned that from a PR. I was like, yo, you do this stuff with all these artists, what's that? Like, do you know what I mean? And I learned, do you know what I mean? So y- it, you definitely have to get help sometimes. Doing labels, invoices, uh, it's mad. Do you yeah. know what I mean? A billion invoices, keeping keeping a tr- track of numbers. You, artists texting you, yo, can I get my piece today? I'm just like, uh, I'm not a bank. Do you know what I mean? I'm not a bank, but this is part of the job. So you have to get help. Do you know what I mean? Help talk to your little cousin. Yo, do you want a, do you want a little 50 quid every time you do an invoice for me or whatever? Do you know what I mean? Something. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> There's an app for that. It's called Wave. Like, don't be paying people 50 pounds to do invoices. Yeah, but, it's not that hard. But <laughs> again, you just see, I've just learned that. I didn't okay, know cool. that. <laughs> All right, I was I'm just saying. thinking of my little cousin, like fifty pounds. <laughs> I don't want him hearing this and like trying to. Yeah. Check, no, no, no. But it's, yeah, it's just a, it's, it's just a thing of like when something if 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 it's too much, don't be afraid to you know share the workload a bit with some good people. There, everyone mm-hmm. has some sort of good person around them. Share the workload. You never know from, until you talk to someone. You don't know. Like until I said that to you, I didn't know there was an app. Do you know what I mean? You might talk to someone. You might be like a man or a woman. You talk to your partner. Your partner's like, oh, what's going on? Why are you so stressed? And you just think, oh, you know nothing about music. <laughs> Whatever. And you just think, oh, don't worry about it. You don't know because you might actually have the conversation with them and they say something that you just think, raw. why don't I think of that? Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, never be afraid to like talk and trust, try and like, yeah. Well, a lot of people don't talk nowadays. People don't really network. Not, sure. not how I used to see it. Do you know what I mean? People exchange number, email, yeah, man, business, wham, bam, done. Like, no one actually actually really talks the realness. Everyone acts like, I'm doing well, I'm sick, I'm great. Come off stage, I've seen man backstage stressing, <laughs> sweating. I'm like, what's wrong with you, cuz? You just, you just done a 10,000 capacity show, what's wrong with you? And the, do you know what I mean? It's, no one really talks and says the real stuff anymore, but I say, don't be afraid, man. Like. Yeah, sharing information. Yeah, share information. I don't know why people are charging people for information. I don't know why it costs. I'm going through the same thing as others. Like, I'm just learning every day, trying, do you know what I mean? But hopefully one day it it will be easy. Cool. Uh, To lead on from that, sharing information, does anyone have any questions to ask? Jeez, you're done, no? Straight away. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Wait, hold on. Who... How do I do yeah, this? Yeah, he's got the mic. It's coming okay, down. Okay, cool. You're going to get a mic. Ask these questions. Oh, I'm on the green one. It's wavy, isn't it? The green. Yeah, mad. we swap after. All right, so now. Uh, P Money, just wanted to ask you quickly, yeah. Uh, what in your mind made you want to dead off dot right like that? <laughs> um. Because <laughs> I was, I was pre in the war. I was pre in it. <laughs> I was pre in it and I was like, whoa. Um, Whoa. And it was like back to back, like there was no playing game. Yeah, do you know what it is? I was actually like on tour and stuff at the time. Yeah, and um, obviously we got, we had a personal issue off outside of music. It, it started outside of music and he brought it to music. And me, I respect music. I don't think any personal issues outside of music should be brought in. A lot of these dudes that are out here talking about what they're talking about, it shouldn't be brought into music, it shouldn't. But when it's a clash, how we do it in grime, if you can keep it on a, on a certain level, it's fun, it's entertaining. and. I had fun in that. Do you know what I mean? I was I would go Napa, get me pool party in that, sit, come back, studio, Leng free dubs, drop them, go back out, another show. I was recording video all the videos you see, half of them I'm in car parks. There was before and after a show. Do you know what I mean? You sometimes when you take something too serious, it will swallow you. You will be you, you will take you to that dark side and I wouldn't be here now able to talk comfortably with you. Do you know what I mean? You definitely so, duppied him though, I can't lie. I respect that. I respect that. I, I, <laughs> I respect that. Hi there, P-Money, you all right, mate? Yeah, um, yeah. 
I just wanted to wish you happy birthday because obviously I saw that April the 8th, it was yeah, your birthday. Yeah. I safe, hope it was safe, lit safe. in that. I am Appreciate a snake. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am a, have a snake. <laughs> 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 nah, do you know what it is? Uh, a couple of years ago, I did, I did a big one for my birthday. So I thought, do you know what? I don't want to do another rave to, um, for my 30th, but uh, Footsie's actually got an event, 28th. At Croydon Box Park, there's like me, Rodigan, Cass is dead. It's like a sick lineup at Croydon Box Park. We're all going there, so come down. Do you know what I mean? Roll. I mean, I'm not one of those guys. I just chill backstage. I'm always in the crowd. I actually watch other artists. You know what I mean? And and talking that. So yeah, but big up for that, bro. All right, cool. So, and also, I wanted to ask you, how hard was it for you to actually set up your record label? Because I noticed you've only done that in the past. Um, it wasn't that hard actually because uh this the site I was telling you that I use to release music is called Ditto. Um if you Google it, it's dittomusic.com and um they actually have um huh? <laughs> yeah, they actually got like a service where you can either just sign up, it's free to sign up, and then when you want to release you can either pay like a certain amount. I mean is it like eighty quid or something? You pay eighty pound and you can release as much as you want for the year. Or they, if you want to set up a label, there's like a service, you pay a certain amount and they actually help you. They send you a box package. It, it has like books and stuff and tells you, they, they'd actually do it full for you, but they actually explain every step that they're doing. You know what I mean? From like, what do you want to call your label to getting it registered at the, in, the, in the house of companies, all of that, like they actually help you do it proper. Do you know what I mean? And I was just like, wow, okay, sick. And they were just like, yeah, you're a label owner now, here you go go and get um, an accountant because the tax man are definitely going to come to you in about six months and say, yo, you've registered this thing. What's going on? Do you know what I mean? But um, yeah, before that, I had no idea. I had no clue how to do it. I wanted to do it for a long time. I didn't know how to. But yeah, via Ditto Music, I did it. But there's a whole load of distribution companies that can help you. Ditto Music is not just the only one. There is a lot of others. Just Google distribution companies, music, and um a whole load will come up. Just talk to them. Say to them, you want to set up a label, they can help you. And then they will be your distributor. They will help you get your music on Spotify, on iTunes, all these things. As as long as you're in some sort of deal with them, they'll continue doing that. Cool. I appreciate the advice, man. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Was there any more? Okay. Uh, How are we going to do this? Yeah. What's happening, Nick from Blatantly Blunt? How you yes, doing? man. You're right. You're right. Good to see you, man. Good, man. Um, when you made Live and Direct, obviously that was an album, right? Came yeah. out of Rinse Records. Yeah. Different from your mixtapes leading up to it. Mm. What was your approach when you made that project compared to the mixtapes leading up to it? Um, my approach was only different in terms of what I had recently learned is in Grime we don't, we didn't necessarily care about mix downs and stuff like that. We did. We didn't. When I, the amount of times I say to a producer, send me the, the parts of your beat. They're like, what? What are you talking about? I'm like, the beat you made, the stems, I need the parts to get mixed. No, it's mixed. I'm saying it's not. Do you know what I mean? They don't, that's just how we are. We don't, we just record wham, bam, out. Like, do you know what I mean? And I took a different approach. When I did a 10 out of 10 with Spyro, um, I met with an engineer called MSM who mixes like, he's mixed like Skepta's album, he's mixed like Jamie's album. And I was like, I got this tune. And what I noticed is when I'm going to festivals and I'm performing after Chaser Status, their tunes are like, bang, I come on. And it's like, mm. I'm like, <laughs> why does it sound like that? Do you know what I mean? And he was like, look, it's the mix. You lot ain't mixing your stuff. You might mix the vocals, but you're not mixing the beat. So I was like, how much is a mix? And then when he told me, I was like, that's an arm and a leg. But if you want it to sound good, it costs money. Do you know what I mean? So I paid it. And when I performed 10 out of 10, it's like, it's one of my heaviest hitting tracks in the club. So then when I said I want to do an album, I started picking certain beats that would have an impact in the, when I perform it. I wanted you to feel the music and get it properly mixed. A lot of, I, used, I asked a lot of producers to use live instruments, like the intro on the album is like piano, violins, stuff like that, do you know what I mean? And um, I just wanted to produce a body of work where you would listen to it, whether you was a grand fan or not, and say, I, f- I like this as music because a lot of people, when they, they say, oh, what music do you do? Uh, people used to look down on grime like it's not music. Like people was ashamed to say, I do grime. Like it's not a genre. Like it's not, I do music, bruv. Do you know what I mean? I make money off it. Like a lot of people used to talk down on it or kind of shy away from it. So I wanted to produce something where you would listen to it and say, this is hard. And I say, yeah, that's grime. You like grime now. 
that's it. Do you know what I mean? I just want, I just wanted to raise the quality a bit. I wanted people to know there are people out here investing and trying to raise the quality of music and to try and inspire other producers to, you know, invest a bit more in their mix downs and stuff like that as well. But that was the main thing of live and direct. That's why I just called it live and direct. It was just straight to the point. Like, this is it. Live, live music. Large up. Uh, there's someone up there at the back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Constance. <laughs> um, I just wanted to talk to you about what made you work with different genres. So you, you're a grime artist, but you decided to work with dubstep genres. You decided to work with drum and bass. Mm. Were you making that decision because you liked the people? Was it, you know, you met someone and they were from, you know, a different genre and you went, yeah, I'll work with you because your sound, or was it more like... I want to work with someone different and I'm going to go into this genre and I'm going to go find someone. Was it on purpose? Or was it by accident? Was it fortuitous? Like, how did you, um, how did you find that? It's a bit of both. I um, started doing dubstep because I was listening to it anyway. Um, when I lived in Forest Still, I knew a lot of the boys from Croydon and stuff like Scream and Benga. I knew them anyway in the music they was making. I used to MC over certain tunes they had on the radio. So then I used to listen to dubstep as a fan. And I started going to uh, Forward. There was a night called Forward that used to happen in Shoreditch. I used to go there. It used to be small. It used to be like, I don't know, 100 people, 80 people. I used to go there every, I think it was every other week, and just listen to dubstep. And then I started speaking to producers, and they were just like, you know, do you want to try something? And I just tried it. So it was a bit of both. I already knew about the scene. And I already liked it. I really liked dubstep as a fan. And then someone was like, you know, you should just try it. Like, try your vocals on it. And then it just worked. And I just picked certain beats and went with it. In terms of drum and bass, it was a similar thing. I knew X-Man, who's quite a, a well-known drum and bass MC, and he booked me and my crew to perform at one of his, um, his events. And then literally was about to leave the stage, and he was like, no, 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 come, come. We're, we're going back to back now, live, on DMB. He just put me on the spot. So, but I like, I like a challenge, you know what I mean? So I thought, I'll just do it, I'll try it. I'll just spray my grand bars at a faster tempo. When I was younger, when you used to play the vinyl, I used to pitch it all the way up to make it fast anyway. That's how I developed my flow. I used, people say, oh, you flow so fast, how? And that's why. So then, without knowing, I was semi-training myself for that tempo. So when he told me to go back to back, it just felt natural. My mum used to listen to the jungle as well in the house. So I kind of just, I was familiar with the tempo and I just thought, oh, this sounds good to me. I'll just do it. And um, I just think there should be no boundaries to what you want to do. If you want to do something, do it. So I just thought it's a challenge. If people say, yo, you're one of the best in grime, why not try and make them say, you're just one of the best MCs in general, do you know what I mean? So I try not to shy away from any challenge. I don't think I'm good at rap though. Sometimes I hear rappers, like, when I listen to Miss Banks, I'm like, she's hard fam. If I do a rap, I, just, I don't feel as good. I don't feel like how I am on grime, I don't feel like I'm good on rap. That's one thing I haven't conquered yet, but even drum and bass, I haven't conquered it, but I'm there, do you know what I mean? I'm getting booked for it so it's like I'm there but it's kind of accidental I just like experimenting and it also helps what I'm trying to push which is grime anyway because a lot of the people there like the fans that I've met they think grime's not doing nothing no more like every time I bump into them oh, I used to listen to grime why'd you stop and they're like oh nothing was going on I'm like when you know oh you know when Wiley and I'm like Wiley and that I'm like do you know there's like there's been loads of other stuff going on like there's other MCs like <laughs> I swear, it's like completely different worlds. Honestly, it's a completely different world. And that's another thing I learned as well from going into different genres. It's different worlds, man. You learn a lot. Like I learned, like in drum and bass, the producer and the DJ are bigger than the MCs. The MCs, they get small name print on flyer. The DJs are massive. They're the guys. Girls screaming for the DJ. I'm like, I'm not used to that. Do you know what I mean? Me, that's... me too. Me. <laughs> I'm like, raw, like the DJ's the main guy, they don't care. They in drum and bass, they could do a lineup of just DJs. The brave will sell out. They don't need an MC. People will just dance and vibe. It's like house. House don't need no host. They don't need they people go there to vibe and dance, you know what I mean? And that's just something I hadn't experienced. In Graham, it was always it's always seems to be about the MC. So that was a good thing for me to learn. I learned hosting skills from going into different genres. I learned how to host. Like a lot of people say, I like your show, P, because you host, you interact with the crowd, you do stuff, you know what I mean? So for me, I just do different things. I like to learn, man. Like I said, information ain't free out here, and no one's sharing. So I just, I learn as much as I can. There's a guy up, up there. There's like, 
Wait, how many minutes do we have left? Oh, okay, cool. Five we minutes. have five cool. minutes left. What's up, Pete? Um, yeah, basically, my question is like a freeway kind of question. First one is, how do you get beats in front of people like you? Um, I can't speak for other artists, but someone like me, my email address is on all my social medias, my Twitter, my Instagram, Facebook, my, my email address is there. I, I tweeted the other day, yo, I need beats, send me emails. Like, I've been getting a ton, ton of emails. I listen to them on a Sunday. Normally on a Sunday, I'm doing nothing. I just listen to beats. Some people send vocals, even though I didn't ask for vocals. People send vocals. <laughs> I listened to vocals. Like, the other day, I listened to, um, there's a guy called, I think, Jaffro sent me something and I was like, yo, this is hard, you know what I mean? And now I'm talking to him. Literally, my email's on my bio. I, I don't know, obviously, some artists ain't got the time or, I don't know, the type of person they are, they don't want to deal with everyone, but I try my best to try and respond and listen. Do you know what I mean? I remember how it was when I came up and there wasn't no one to talk to. Do you know what I mean? There wasn't anyone. There's no one to like, yo, hear me out. I'm sick. I need you to hear me. There's nowhere to send music, so... The only way to break that cycle is to break that cycle. So I just put yeah. my email address. You can email me, send me music, yeah. ask for advice, whatever. Cool. Was that your three-part question? No, he, kind of <laughs> he kind of answered the other question. Uh, like, yeah. Do you work with artists that aren't that well-known? But yeah, 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 yeah. I don't care about known. I don't care about numbers, views. Yeah. If I think you're sick, like that Jaffro kid, he, I'm into Dragon Ball Z and, and yeah. stuff like that. And he had a lyric where he was talking about it. Yeah, and I was like, I need that on the tune. That's hard. Yeah. That is so hard. Do you know what I mean? So I don't care about your views. I'm not bothered yeah. about that. If I like what you're doing, I'll support it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Even if I might retweet you and post your video, that don't mean I want to work with you. I just yeah. I just want to support I'll support you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm a human being at the end of the day, like everyone else. But um, yeah, yeah, I work with anyone I like. Uh, another another quick one. Would you wear a dot rotten if you like? You know, if what? If it worked out right, because he's a sick producer, isn't he? Dot Ryan, would you work with yeah, him? yeah, yeah. He's a sick producer. I don't know how it would work business wise. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like we'd have, <laughs> we'd have to like I don't know. There would be like <laughs> yeah. Some if there was like, business is business, isn't it? You can do that. But it, as a producer, I would never take that away from someone. Just because you have an issue yeah. with someone doesn't mean suddenly they're not talented. Yeah. Anyone who does that, you you're a sour soul. Do you know what I mean? That's not I'm not about that. I'm not about that still. So yeah, if it's, if it's the Nang B and I had to try and do business with the kid. Maybe, but at the moment, no, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a couple more in, in front of you. There's not going to be um, enough time. You're not going to have to clash you do to one ask more. the question. <laughs> right, they're saying one more. We did this one, the last one. They're, say, they're saying we've got one more. I was just wondering what's coming up next for you. And before you said that you really liked um, visuals and something you were interested in, is there anything could we expect you? Because you seem like you dipping your hands into different areas and liking to learn different things. Could we see you directing a short film or something mad? Um, yeah, I mean, well, the first question, what's next, is me and Little D got a joint EP Great. coming out. And um, for those that don't know, we released like a freestyle on um, JDZ Media on YouTube. It got like a million oh, views. Really? It, it was called, <laughs> it's, it was called um, Back to Back. And it was literally like, I noticed a, a lot of people were just trying to do songs and stuff like that. And that's all cool. But Grime came from MCs just going back to back, passing the mic. And we just done that. You know, we just done a freestyle. It took off. So we yeah. people were asking for an EP. So we've done a whole EP with that theme of us going back to back on tracks and stuff. Um, that's what's next. And then after, after summer, I'm doing um, a mixtape. It'll be Money Over Everyone Free. It's like a sequel. This will be the last one to that. And then um, probably 2019 album. Um, I forgot what the other what the other question was. What did he say? Uh, would you direct a short film? Yeah, actually, I want to do something. I've always wanted to do, like, we might even be able to do it with our EP where we film the videos in a way where there are, like, mini short films that link <coughs> everything together. I've always wanted to do something like that, but um, who will be featuring in that short film? <coughs> uh, Ag, <laughs> obviously. <Really? laughs> oh my gosh, man! I'd but love yeah, to. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely wanted to do that. It's just sometimes you got to find the time to be able to do these things. And if I'm gonna do it, I want it to be properly. I don't want to ever have to use that excuse of oh I'm trying or oh I'm new to this. Do you know what I mean? That's just me, like a perfectionist. I want it to be like on my days. I didn't know oh you God. could do that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But um. Yeah, there's, there's a whole load of things, but mainly, yeah, look out for the EP. Um, the first track will be out in a matter of weeks. Video will be out in a matter of weeks. So, um, yeah, just look out for that. Ready. Who's going to be the last question? Uh, Make it last, about I'm DIY. I'm the last question around here. 
Yes, sir. Oh. You are going. Be my yes. going. Yeah. I like your music. He's, he's it's good. Yeah, my last question is this, but it's a serious question. In regards to drill taking over from grime now, young artists in your area or in my area or so anywhere across Excuse the country me. now, they want that to be a drill um, MC. They won't want it to be a grime MC. And the youth create the movement. The youth are the ones that create the change. And in regards to the violence, it's not the only reason, but it's a big influence because, you know, music influences reflect society. So what can you do in terms of the grime scene and not yourself as an individual, but how do we put the positivity back in the music and put grime back as the forefront of the UK music and not this Americanized um, moderation? First of all, I don't believe in anything taking over anything. I think there are trends. There's, that's it. Every year there's a different trend. It, you, it doesn't mean because grime's not the main trend, it's not still active. I was in Australia not long ago doing grime, like a month ago. And, and then four months before that, I was in Japan. It, 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 they don't mean, oh, it's not the main topic. It's not popping. It's popping. Do you know what I mean? Grime's always been doing stuff. I've been making money off grime for 10 years. For anyone to tell me it's not, oh, something's overtaking it. I'm like, okay, I've, I do festivals every year. I don't know what you're talking about. So I think things are trends. And right now, Drew is a trend. So is like UK Afro. It's a trend. I think live it. In the moment, something else will come next year. I remember when you couldn't do nothing but listen to house. Everything was just house. Everywhere was house. Now people, are, oh, I'm sick of house. I'm sick of shuffling. You know what I mean? <laughs> like been shuffling for three years. <laughs> yeah, I've been shuffling for three years. What's this? Like, <laughs> like that. It's just they're just trends, in it. It's just I don't think there's a need to oh bring grime to the forefront. People are people that do grime are, are doing all right. People that are up and coming are finding their ways. It, it, everyone will find their way. Everyone has their time. Like, do you know what I mean? There was a time when I was at the forefront of my era. People would say, oh, you was a Stormzy of that era because you was everywhere. You was like the first person to hit a million views on one extra's channel and stuff like that. Of that era, yeah, cool. It's a new time. It's a new time. It's time for someone else. You know what I mean? New things happen now. It's the, there's a YouTube era. My, my son's three years old. He knows how to work YouTube better than me. I, I Sometimes I think, how did you even find this kid that you're watching? Who is this kid? What, how do you know him? Do you know what I mean? But that, it's just, they're just trends. But in terms of the, um, the conversation about the violence and that, I see it talking a lot. And what I, the first thing I'll say is take music out of the conversation because if you go to an Ed Sheeran show, and someone spills a drink on someone's back and that guy punches that guy in the face. It's not Ed Sheeran's fault. <laughs> None of you are gonna say it's Ed Sheeran's fault. No one's gonna say it's Ed Sheeran's fault. But when it's a grime night, oh, the MC, they target the MC. So let's, let's target the actual problem. What I think the, the main problem is, we're in mad times. There's no youth clubs, there's, no, there's hardly any education or help for a lot of these youths. I remember when I was coming up, youth clubs were getting shut down left, right and centre and that used to keep me out of trouble. When there was nowhere to go, I had no reason, no choice, but you know, I'm going to wander to another ends and now I've got a situation with some guys because I'm not actually from their ends, but they got the one youth club that I want to go to, I want to play table tennis, do you know what I mean? There's, there's so many different other factors and reasons why this is going on and I don't think people should be picking music because what can happen? Half of these kids that are talking about whatever they're talking about in the songs, yeah, they're talking about whatever they're doing in the song, but what they're talking about happened before they made the song. Do you get what I'm saying? So you need to start targeting where the issue started and what caused the issue, because no one is fighting because, oh, he made a Nang beat, I'm gonna stab him. That's yeah. not happening. It's not music, do you know what I mean? They're talking about it because they got nowhere else to talk. They got no one else to tell. They got no one else to listen. No one else is listening. So they do music because they got a thousand youths out there that are gonna listen to them, they're gonna relate, they share stories and whatever. But I wouldn't say music is the cause. Like now they're saying, um, I don't know, like I saw the other day, they said our oh, Westwood's profiting off gangs. How does he know every single one is in a gang? He doesn't, it's not like, obviously he knows there's stuff going on, but well, I don't know if he's even made money and two, that doesn't mean he's the cause of this thing. He's not the cause. Everyone's too quick to put something on someone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I think there's a thin line between glamorizing violence and glamorizing like things that are negative to us as a like as a culture, mm. and speaking the reality of situations that you live in. And I think a lot of people like someone doing a song about what happened in their life. That's them doing a song. But then you have like these like uh, exposing gangs accounts and stuff like that. 
like you're not talking about any situation lived you're glamorizing violence mm. so i think when you have things like that that's where you should put the focus on like what needs to be changed because if we're like pitting people like westwood or like we're we're trying to find someone to blame everything on people are still dying people are still getting killed like it's our communities where a lot of us grew up in yeah like this, the, the issue is still happening even though you've just got someone to blame sh- stuff on. Yeah. That's a swear, sorry. Uh, even if you've got someone to blame someone something on. Yeah. So I think a lot of people need to check where you're like sudden, you know, where you're your interest in like what's happening in the like where it where it's actually coming from. Like are you saying things to have someone to blame or are you saying things because you want to find a solution? Because if you want to find a solution, it's not the the music that we need to be focusing on. Yeah, it's the actuality of the situation. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I was a big part of them trying to shut down the six nine six form. Do you know what I mean? I was on BBC News talking about it, and I made the same point about if you went to an Ed Sheeran show and something happened, they're not going to blame Ed Sheeran. But in a Graham show, they say, "Oh, Graham, shut it down. Do do no Graham raves." Do you know what I mean? And like one thing I I said to them that they couldn't say nothing to is. Festivals and like shows is the only time I see all these youths come together and rave. They rave. Like I can't tell you the last time I saw a madness. Obviously there's some maybe there's some madnesses at certain raves and events, but I can't tell you the last time I saw anything at my show. I always see guys I would never see together holding each other and mosh pitting. I'm like, that's do you know what I mean? Come to a show or do you know what I mean? When they say I'll oh, blame the music, I say come to a studio session and vibe and and see how the creative process is there's no violence in the booth no one's ah yeah i'm gonna do this because it's i'm gonna say this because it's gonna it's vibe man i'm making music do you know what i mean man i have a voice like when i started doing music like i wanted to be heard i picked up when i pick up a mic you listen because i'm the loudest person in the room and that's how these kids feel they feel they feel unheard they got problems People say, oh, music, 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 whatever, cool, sick. And then I turn to a man in the government or a police officer and I say, all right, cool, so how come I can order a knife online now? How is that possible? Why is that possible that me, I can go on any site now, order a knife, and it will get delivered to my house? You ain't doing your job. You're meant to be checking these, these parcels and these, these sites and all that. I can't do that, me, I can't do that. You're blaming music, I'm an MC. How do I stop these youths ordering these massive Rambo knives that are somehow getting delivered to their houses. This is not an advertisement. <laughs> so. But I'm just, I'm just saying, like, do you know what I mean? There's way more things to talk about before you even mention music. Do you know what I mean? There's a lo- like that, that's a scapegoat thing, man. That's, true. You know, that's a lot of people avoid and blame. Do you know what I mean? I, when they can answer me how guns get in a country, they can start talking to me. Until they answer that, I, I don't really want to hear it. <laughs> This was an amazing talk. Thank you for coming. Big up, big up.